Let's pray. Father, as we come to your word now, give us ears to hear. Open the eyes of our heart and the ears of our heart and grant us attentive minds and receptive minds. Grant me to be faithful to your word. Grant me a heart for your word, I pray. We love your word. We want to honor your word. Stand by me. Minister your word, I pray through Christ. Amen. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus to all the saints who are in Philippi, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I'm sure that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It's right for me to feel this way about you because I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. My prayer for you is that you might, um, your love might abound more and more with, with knowledge and all discernment, that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless at the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And I want you to know that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love, knowing that I'm put here for the defense of the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed. And in this, I rejoice. Yes, and I will rejoice, for I know that through your prayers and through the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that now, as always, Christ might be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. But which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I'm, I'm hard pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh, is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I am sure that I will remain and continue, all, continue with you all for your, for your progress and joy in the faith so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus at my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you're standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, not frightened in anything by your opponents. This will be a sure sign to them of their destruction 
and of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you for the sake of Christ that you should not only believe on him, but that you should suffer for his sake. Engaged in the same conflict that you saw that I had and now see that I still have. So, if there's any encouragement in Christ, if there's any comfort from love, if there's any participation in the Spirit, if there's any affection and, and sympathy, complete my joy by being of the same mind and having the same spirit and being in full accord and of one mind. Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but count others more significant than yourselves. Let each of you look not only to his own interests, but also to the interests of others. Have this mind in you, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant and being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient unto death, even death on the cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you've always obeyed, so also now, not only in my absence, but also, not only in my presence, but also in my, my absence, work, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For God is the one who's at work in you to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do, do all things without grumbling or complaining. Do all things without grumbling or questioning. That you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation among whom you shine like lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life. Holding fast to the word of life. Go ahead. So that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not labor in vain or run in vain. If I'm to be poured out as a drink offering upon the sacrificial offering of your faith, I'm glad and rejoice with you all. Likewise, you should be glad and rejoice with me. I hope in the Lord Jesus to send Timothy to you soon, that I too may be cheered by news of you. I have no one like him who will be genuinely concerned for your welfare. They all seek their own interests, not those of Jesus Christ. But you know Timothy's proven worth, how as a son with the father he served with me in the gospel. I hope therefore to send him to you soon, as soon as I see how things will go with me. And I, I trust in the Lord that shortly I myself will come also. I have thought it necessary that I should send to you Epaphroditus, my brother and fellow worker and fellow soldier and your minister and messenger for my need. For he has been longing for you and has been distressed that you heard that he was ill. Indeed, he was ill, near to death. But God had mercy on him and not only on him, but on me, lest I should have sorrow upon sorrow. 
I am the more eager to send him to you, therefore, that you may rejoice at seeing him again, and that I may be less anxious. So receive him in the Lord with all joy and honor such man because he nearly died for the work of Christ, risking his life to complete what was lacking in your service to me. Finally, brothers, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you is no trouble for me and is safe for you. Watch out for the dogs. Watch out for the evil workers. Watch out for those who mutilate the flesh. For we are the true circumcision who worship by the Spirit of God and glory in Christ Jesus and put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh. If anyone thinks that he has reason for confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the, tribe of, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. But whatever gain I had, I counted as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as refuse in order that I might gain Christ. And be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, which is based on law, but the righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. The righteousness from God that depends on faith. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. That I may share his sufferings, becoming like him in his death. If by any means possible, I might attain the resurrection from the dead. Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect. But I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Brothers, I do not consider that I have already made it my own. One thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the call, for the, up, for the call of the up for the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us who are mature think this way. And if in anything you think otherwise, God will reveal that to you. Only let us hold true to what we have attained. Brothers, join in imitating me. And keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example that you have in us. For many of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction. Their God is their belly. And they glory in their shame. With minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change this lowly body, our lowly body, into a body like his glorious body by the power that enables him to subject all things to himself. Therefore, my brothers, whom I love, my joy, and crown, stand firm thus in the Lord, my beloved. I entreat you, Odia, and I entreat Syntyche to agree in the Lord. And yes, also I ask you, my true companion, to help these women who have labored side by side with me in the gospel together with Clement, and all my fellow workers whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord. And again, I will say, rejoice. 
Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Don't be anxious about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God with thanksgiving. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. I rejoice greatly that now at length you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity. Not that I'm speaking of being in need, for I know how I have learned in every situation to be content. I know how to be brought low and I know how to abound. I have, in every and in each and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of facing. Plenty and hunger, abundance and need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Yet it was kind of you to share in my need. You Philippians yourselves know that in the beginning of the gospel, when I first came out from Macedonia, no church entered into giving and receiving with me except you only. Even in Thessalonica, you sent me help for my needs once and again. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that increases to your account. I have been fully repaid more than. Having received from Epaphroditus the gifts that you sent, a fragrant offering. A sacrifice, pleasing, acceptable to God. My God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Greet every brother. Greet every saint who is in Christ Jesus. The brothers who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with your spirit. Let's pray. Almighty God, your word is of infinite value. Infinite value. Please cause your people to feel this. I ask in Jesus' name.